Hello views, this is Mr. Roblox Indonesia, and welcome to the first Roblox devlog video. For this week's of winter motion update, we are going to revamp most of the northern seas level, like the sniper tower or the level 7 itself, the flag area, and finally the level 6, which is something I keep neglecting since 2021. Then we'll make the walk and jump animations and add a new Indev era badge. And if I still have time, we'll make some random changes along the way. I'm also sorry for using an artificial voice because I didn't have or even afford a better microphone. Anyways, let's begin our development or my development since I'm the only one who makes the development alone. Alright, the first thing I did was add the mechanism to the falling bridge that I made from the previous week. At first, I was quite confused as to why the code wouldn't work. I literally followed everything from Alvin Blarks' tutorial video. Some frustration later, I searched for another way to make the bridge fall after I click the button. Later I found out, and of course, I'm just too stupid to follow that tutorial, when you can just put the script under the button part, instead of using an event thingy thing. After some simple coding, it finally worked. Nice. Now it's time to make some huge changes to the flag area, the level 8, the level 9, and the level 6. First, I expand the flag area, so that I can build the barrier later. Then I remove the floating bridge, which has been a parasite since the save, and geared up update. After whitening my black face with a 14 watt bedroom light, I searched for inspiration, organized, and then started experimenting with what level 6 could be. After adding a floor, I added two more towers to simulate a gate, or so I thought. Then, after long consideration, I decided to open up the secret button area. Because I had an idea for a future update and finally use it as a feature. After some tying up, some fixes, and making the floor one stud higher, because I got damage from it, level 6 is now finished. Yeah, it looks like a ship now. Today I started with some random experiment. So here's what the experiments or the idea will be. There's this red box thing. And if a player from the enemy team, which is the southern sea, enters the box, some random explosion in the red box is going to activate. And it's going to kill the player from the enemy team. But if the player is from the northern sea, it won't activate, since this mechanism will be the northern sea's defensive mechanism, before the enemy team takes the flag. About how the player will survive, that leaves it up to the players. Well, of course, it won't work. So I decided to postpone it, and focus on other things, like, speed. For quite a while now, this game has been a slow one, and by action genre standards, that's a bad news. So I decided to increase the walk speed of the player from 20 to 30. However, a problem occurred. The changes can't be saved. After some research, it seems like I'm not the only one who experiences this kind of problem. Some other methods say to use a script, but I don't quite like that. I decided to find a way to solve the problem without using a script. Finally, a solution is found, by going into starter player's properties, and there I can change the speed. It works pretty well. Now it's finally the time for animation, but first. I need some references. 
After researching some references, I started to search the animation section, since it doesn't appear in the Plugins section. After finding it in the Avatar section, I began to animate. It was a frustrating process, since I didn't know how many keyframes were needed to have a good and smooth animation. After quite a while, here is what it looks like. I tested it, and... Hum. It is quite slow. If it is compared with the player speed that has now been increased. So I shortened it to make it look fast. Much better. After some random changes and additions, it is time to go to sleep. Today, I began with making the new badge design. For the in air version, I use PowerPoint as usual to design, since I don't understand how to use other applications, or sometimes the app itself it's pretty heavy to execute. I use cyan, light cyan, and white color schemes for the background and a platinum gradient for the indev text. After it's done, I upload it to Roblox, and luckily, I won't need to pay 100 bucks now. Nice. Now, I came back to the experiment I did yesterday. After some testing and some tweaking, it still won't work. So, I scrapped it. Now that the deadline has passed, I rushed to make the jump animation. Using a reference from Flood Escape 2, which I played yesterday. And here is the result. It looks like a jumping chicken for some reason. After testing it, I realized that the fall animation is connected to the jump animation. So I decided to make a rushed fall animation. It looks weird. So, I scrapped it, published the new update, and called it a day. Anyway, thank you for watching this devlog. It was quite stressful to make, both the update and this video. If you're interested in the game, you can check out the Discord server, where you can't talk except for giving some feedback about the game. Please give me some feedback. An announcement channel, a dev or update log channel, and the fact channel and the game, all of which are linked in the description. That's all for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next week for the third update.